Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to today's Harmony Insights lunch date. My name is Eric Kershaw. I'm the owner of Harmony Insights LLC, a company that allows me to work with organizations and consultants using the DISC personality assessment, much of which is done online these days between the assessments and the, the virtual workshops. I'm also the founder of the HR Hot Seat Inclusive Mastermind community. We have over 2,600 members in 10 different licensed chapters around the country. And you can find out more about HR Hot Seat at hrhotseat.com. Everything that we're doing is free. It always is, always has been, and is all virtual these days. So we're keeping you safe while still building and reinforcing community, something that our guest today is very well versed in. Those of you who have participated in a Harmony Insights lunch date in the past know that I choose my guests, people who inspire me to do my best work, and my guests choose our topics. And today's guest, Enrique Rubio, the founder of the Hacking HR community, um, has chosen a topic that he has called the need for global collaboration in human resources. Enrique, welcome to today's Harmony Insights lunch date. Eric, thank you so much. Hello, everybody. Nice to meet you all and nice to see you. Uh, it's, uh, I'm very happy to be here. Eric and I have collaborated in a number of events before, so happy to be with his community today. We have, and I, I've just mentioned to Enrique just moments before we started that he's invited me in, in so many different ways to be active with his Hacking HR community. I've moderated um, actually some funny stories about moderating your first events here in, in Chicago that you couldn't be at, the first event ever, I think, that you couldn't attend yourself, and then how that has blossomed into what's just become a great friendship. And uh, I really appreciate that, and I'm grateful for this opportunity to, um, to invite you to something. Thank you. Thank you so much. By way of further introduction, um, because I think you could probably do it better than I can, if I were to introduce you, I would start by saying that you are a builder of HR communities. You uh, are an ultra marathoner. You're often found in the woods running <laughs> yeah. in excess of several dozen miles. Um, how would you introduce yourself in a way that's going to set us up for this conversation we're having today? Well, I am... Um... It, when, when it comes to the HR space, the way that I like to see myself is as a bridge builder. And what that means is that I, through the Hacking HR community, but also the many other things that I've done in my professional career, one of the things that I truly enjoy is building bridges and avenues and opportunities for people to be able to connect with each other. And that means especially now building online avenues for people to connect across the world in, from, from different regions, different countries, different sectors, different industries, to talk about some of the challenges and some of the possible solutions to those challenges that pertain to all of us uh, around the world. And that's exactly why the topic that I chose today, which is global collaboration in, in HR. So in short, I would, I would define myself and, and introduce myself as, as a bridge builder. So that makes sense then when, when I come to you and said, hey, Enrique, I want to talk. What do you want to talk about? You say the need for global collaboration in HR, which I um, makes total sense in terms of what you do with Hacking HR. I know where your heart is and where your passions lie. You've just talked about some of that. Um, so our, I see our conversation today touching on some of the challenges that you think are attendees, many of whom are HR professionals, some of them aren't going to be, but some of the challenges that you feel that um, our attendees face today in terms of collaborating globally, um, and that could be resources to do so, it could be just sort of the inclination to do so, the motivation, um, some tips if people really would like to start doing this a little bit better than they have before, some tips you have, and maybe even some resources along the way that I will share um, via email, a follow-up email with all attendees on this, on this call today. Um, I would love to start, if you wouldn't mind, we've mentioned the word community a couple of times in relation to HR Hot Seat, Hacking HR, and, and otherwise. I know you were a big fan of building community in general, building bridges, but building bridges through community. Mm. Um, what does, that, what does that word mean to you? Why does that word resonate so strongly with who you are and what you stand for? That's a great question. You know, I think that sometimes, actually more often than not, the problems that we're dealing with in the world are extremely complex. And just, just wanna say a couple of things. Three of the problems that we're dealing with right now, one of them is of course coronavirus. The other one is 
social and economic inequality. And the other one is the negative impact of technology in society. So when you think about these three areas of complexity and challenges in the world, and you think about the fact that we are all going to go, if not now, eventually through some level of pain because of these drivers of change, the fact that we can't and we haven't come together globally to resolve or to think about how these issues will impact us in the HR space and to find solutions for today's problems, but also for the problems that we foresee happening going forward. I, I think to me that that creates a sense of urgency to bring people together in community, in groups that we all share the idea that we can create better workplaces by resolving by many things, but one of them is resolving some of these complex challenges. So to me, this idea of community is, how do we bring people together who want to resolve the complex challenges that we have today in the workplace? And a lot of those challenges are stemming out of this, at least these three main drivers that I mentioned uh, a few seconds ago. There are six to me, you know, climate change uh, is one of them, coronavirus, the impact of technology, uh, demographic shift, uh, inequality, globalization, those six elements represent gigantic elements of change that will create challenges that we have never gone through in humanity before. So once again, the idea of community is how do we bring people together in the HR space, that's the space that I'm dedicated to, how do we bring people together in the HR space that can think, all right, how is going to, how is climate change going to affect the work that I do in my organization, in my country? How are other people in other regions resolving this same problem? Same questioning and curiosity would apply to all the other challenges. So when we bring people together, I think, and I believe that the capacity to resolve those challenges is really limitless because you're bringing talent, creativity, curiosity, innovation, and a creativity and a number of other uh, capabilities and skills that together are way more powerful than just individually. So this applies to companies, right? Like having people working uh, together across different industries, coming together to think and resolve those challenges, but also across regions and across countries. I mean, the fact that coronavirus is one of these global challenges that we have today, but there are many more climate change, as I mentioned before. So that's what the idea of community means to me, bringing people together and tapping into the limitless potential that we all have when we come together and start discussing about how to solve those problems that we have. That's why I'm so passionate about this. If people showed up to be inspired today, hopefully you agree we're off to a good start. <laughs> 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 Whenever I need a pick me up, I tune into whatever Enrique is doing for a couple of minutes and I'm good to go. Thank you. <laughs> he brings the energy for sure. It's funny, you and I have talked a lot about introversion and extroversion yeah. and kind of where we are, each are on the spectrum. And I mean, just the energy and the passion that you bring, whether you're turning it on for this conversation or you carry this with you at all times is just so <laughs> uh, infectious. So I appreciate it. And it's one Thank of the reasons you. why I wanted us to talk today. I've uh, created a couple of quick polls. I'm going to launch one for people to uh, participate in. You're talking about um, collaborating um, internationally, you know, globally, yeah. and, and the value of that. And so I want to ask people, do you actively network with HR professionals in other countries? If you are an HR professional, or even if you're not, you know, you can certainly still respond. I want to get a sense of where we are on this. I would imagine that, uh, we'll have a follow-up question too that will relate to this, that um, you hear on occasion, you know what, Enrique, like I, I love this idea of global collaboration, but it's all I can do to collaborate with people in my organization. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, if, the teams, if at all, if <laughs> at all. Right. The teams in my company have a hard enough time communicating mm -hmm. and collaborating, and now I'm expected to exchange best practices with people in other countries. Um, yet you see it happening every day. This is the community yeah. that you've built. So um, how do you respond to that challenge? You know, I, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a great, uh, that's a great question. And I think there's, as you can tell, I, I just, I just wanna, I'm gonna respond this, to this question with, with my own personal story. If you can all tell, English is my second language, right? So I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a native from Venezuela. I've been in America for the past 10 years. And when I started writing blogs 
which was in 2014 for LinkedIn. I was writing, of course, that was a new thing for me to be writing blogs in, in English. And when I look back at what I did back then, today, I'm like, I don't even understand what I was trying to say because <laughs> they, they really don't make that much sense, right? Because my English was good, but it was not as good as I think it is today to communicate and whatnot. But what happened to me was I needed to break the barrier of fear to put myself and to put this message out there. And I think very often, one of the main barriers that prevent people from communicating with others, from joining their conversations, from just reaching out to other people that they don't even know, but that they want to learn from, is a fear of what if I am rejected? What if I get ignored? What if I have a conversation and I get disappointed? All of those things could happen. But I think one of the main barriers that prevent people from actually taking action is that fear of what, would hap what will happen after I take this one action. So here the encouragement is some people just break the barriers. And, and when you do that, of course, there's going to be consequences. Some of them may be positive, which that's the expectation. Some of them may be an opportunity for you to grow and learn. And that's what's happened to me with the Hacking HR community. It was for me an opportunity to say, I want to put this message off. We need to build global community and collaborate more across the HR space, countries, countries industries, regions to make each other better. And to do that, I'm just going to have to start putting stuff out there. Some people may like it and some people may not like it. But if I don't do it, who else is going to do it? Or how long do I have to wait for somebody to do it? And let me get, I, I want to add one, one very interesting story to, to this. When I put together my very first event, which was on September 28th, 2017, that was the first Hacking HR thing ever. I invited this guy, senior HR person from this very well-known company, and I invited him over email. He said like, oh, I, I, I'm thinking about it. Call me because I want to talk to you about it. I called him and literally, I'm not lying. The first thing, he didn't even say hello. The first thing he told me over the phone was, why Hacking HR? And I said to him, well, because I think Hacking HR needs to change from the core and the concept of hacking is going to the lines of code of something and changing it from there, not from the surface, but from the core. And he said to me, I don't think everything in HR needs to change. And he used this, this one example. He said, I don't think employment relations will need to change ever. And I said, I think you're wrong. I never invited him to my event, by the way. And I said, I said to him, I think you're wrong. And he was wrong. Today, 40% of America is working from home. The relationships that we have in the workplace are completely different than they were when we were all together in the same workplace. So employee relations has been evolving because of the nature of the world today and technology and whatnot. But anyway, if I, the, the point here is that that's part of what's happening in my journey. People, people don't necessarily agree with all that we're doing, but the fact here is that we have broken the barriers of fear and we've said, you know what, we have to do it because like this quote says, you know, if not us, who, if not now, when? So that's, that's the way I see it. And my encouragement to this community is be part of not only this community, you know, the, um, the HR hot seat that Eric is putting together. Be part of Hacking HR. You're welcome here. There's other groups. I know you've been with Jennifer McClure from Disrupt HR, and there's other groups out there. There are many groups that you can join. We're not competing with each other. We are complementing each other in, a, in an ecosystem of, uh, of stakeholders that is trying to do something in a space that is very complex, which is the HR space. So just be part of one of those communities, or like I tell people sometimes, start your own. If you say, you know what? I am a nature person, but I love, say, you know, arts. Uh, well, you know, start your HR and arts community. Why not? You know, who's preventing you from doing that? So right. that to me is the core concept here, breaking those barriers of fear. One of the many perspectives that I appreciate that you bring to this conversation, it would be easy for, for us to sit back and say, you know, well, you must be a service provider. You know, you must be selling something. And, and I know you as a, a former um, HR practitioner. Mm. Um, and I use the, the term former lightly because I still think you're practice, practicing HR in different ways, of course, but you're, you're coming at this with the background of somebody who has been an HR practitioner when you lived on the other side of the country. <laughs> and so, so it's, it's as, you, as you speak so eloquently and passionately about um, building HR community, you know firsthand what the benefit is of doing so. Yeah. Um, I wanna show the results of the poll 
Um, so I'll share the results now. If you can see it, 40% uh, of our attendees said that they do actively network with HR pros in other countries. 60% say um, they don't actively, which leads us then to... Hacking um, HR. <laughs> right? Hacking HR. And actually, let's go there while I bring up my second poll. I actually, that's, that's not a bad idea. And I, I, for some reason, I'm not able to get to the second one. So, oh, no, we do have it. Okay. I'll launch this in a moment. As we're talking about the globalization of HR, um, give people a sense of what we're talking about in the HR, uh, hacking HR community. So I talked about 10 chapters, HR Hot Seat, all here in the United States. You are, you're talking in global terms with your organization. So tell people yeah. how many chapters, uh, how many active members, however you slice and dice this. Yeah, well, that, that's, that's a question that is, we always use a proxy because only recently we launched our membership platform, which by the way, I encourage people that, you know, to join as official members of Hacking HR, either premium, which is a free member or premium plus, which is $20 a month. And I say this as a commercial because like uh, Eric said before, I was working in HR now, I'm full-time into this, so I gotta make it work community-wise, but also financially <laughs> somehow. Uh, I haven't uh, gotten to the final solution to that yet. Uh, but right now we have almost uh, 90 chapters around the world. Uh, our goal for this year was to have 200 chapters. That's not gonna happen, of course, because, well, uh, uh, you know, people are very distracted by all that's going on right now. They, and you know, rightfully so. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a very complicated situation with the coronavirus this year. We have elections in the United States, so uh, I think people are very their their mind is somewhere else. So I don't think we're gonna reach this goal that I had to have 200 chapters, but we're gonna get there hopefully next year. So right now we have 90 chapters in all continents uh, of the world. So we have chapters, you know, in, in India, we got a couple of chapters. We got a chapter in Singapore. We have a chapter in uh, Hong Kong. We have a cha you know, several chapters in Europe. We have a, a ch chapters in South America, uh, uh, a new chapter that's coming up, Montevideo, but we, Buenos Aires, Chile, uh, Santiago, uh, in Quito, in Bogota. So and in America, of course, we have a number of chapters as well. So we have about 90. We're reaching 100,000 followers on our LinkedIn community, which is our main um, you know, communication platform. And for the membership base, which is something that we just launched like about a month ago, you know, it's, we are almost like about 2,000 members, most of them free. I'm hoping that more, more of them become paying members. That would be, that would be great. <laughs> so that's, that's the size of our community right now. I've experienced your um, events firsthand. We have a local chapter here in Chicago. So a sh yeah. Chicago chapter of Hacking HR. And um, I had a great thought. I was going somewhere with that and suddenly it's escaped me. So I, I want to sort of use that then as the context for the second poll that I want to launch asking people, you know, what do you feel is your greatest challenge when it comes to collaborating with HR pros outside of your organization? Insufficient time, you know, other resources, leadership not supportive, just a couple of options there. And you can clarify any of your responses in the, the chat area as well. So Enrique, as you're gathering these people in 90 chapters around the country on all continents, I'm, I'm assuming um, that you're hearing a number of additional challenges, kind of like mm -hmm. what, what we see here. And so people are coming to you and saying, you know, it, it could be that um, I, I don't have the time, I don't have the bandwidth with, with so much going on. Uh, my leadership is not supportive of me collaborating outside of our company. What do you see as some of the consequences of not collaborating. So I'm an HR professional. I'm very focused on my job and my company and getting work done. And I know hacking HR is out there. I know HR hot seat is out there. I know HR professionals exist in other countries, but I'm not prioritizing for whatever reason, inserting myself into those conversations. What do you think some of the consequences are of not participating globally? I think there are two very this very easy to distinguish consequences of not collaborating globally or in general, not collaborating at all. And they are our incapacity to see the areas where we need to change and our lack of avenues for learning. And these two things, our incapacity to change and our lack of avenues for learning, they are, they are very important elements that will determine whether we are successful in this new reality of work. The, 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 HR has been very monolithic for a long period of time. And I argue all the time when people ask me, what do, you, what do you think HR professionals need to do in order to remain relevant 
and adding value. And my, my response is always the same. And you can go back to three years of videos of what I've done. And it's always been the same. You have to learn non-HR stuff because the HR traditional things, we've already mastered those things. I mean, we may be able to do them better. Of course, we can always do better and we can always improve, but compensation, employment relations or employment law uh, and policy, that's the old school kind of thing. I mean, we will still need to do th those things, but that's a transaction. Nobody finds a lot of value in those transactions anymore. They want much more from, from HR. So by collaborating globally, what we get is number one, an idea, of how some of the most progressive HR thinkers and companies, what they're doing and how they're changing in any given area. And number two, what are the capabilities, the skills, the new things that they are learning that I know has been successful in their practice that I can maybe replicate in my own individual way or in my own organizational way. So not collaborating, I think is conducive to our incapacity to change our, and our inability to find avenues for more learning. Now, more collaboration means that we are going to be looking at other role models that ha are maybe a little bit further ahead than, than we are, or maybe a little bit behind us, but we can tell them what we've done to get to the place where we are. And that gives us the opportunity to change, do better, and learn the things that we need to learn in order to continue to stay relevant. Somebody asked me recently, do you think HR will ever go obsolete, will ever become irrelevant? My answer was yes, if we continue to do the same thing. It's right. as simple as that. If you continue to do the same thing, one company will come and say, you know what? You are only just filtering resumes and you cost me $70,000 a year. I can do that with a computer that cost me $10,000 a year and can do probably 10 times faster than what you can do because you're only doing the transaction. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. Now, if you add another and more layers of value that you learn from through this global collaboration, I think it's going to be impossible for us to go obsolete. People will need HR. I love what you said, so much of what you said, but about um, following models and learning by those who have come before us in some way. And I can't help but think, I'm going to go off on a little bit of a tangent here, and it's going to go in two directions. Number one, and I know we only have five minutes left. Number one, I'm thinking about the pandemic. And there are other countries who experienced it before us. Mm -hmm. And then we could have a whole conversation about whether or not we learned from the experience of those mm -hmm. countries. I would argue we probably did not learn as well as we could <laughs> we have or not, respond yeah. <laughs> in ways we could have. Um, other countries I'm assuming are experiencing, for example, the future of work. We are in some ways. And I know yes. that's something that you and Hacking HR talk a lot about. Other countries are experiencing the future of work in ways that we can learn from. I went hiking with my, and you'll appreciate this story, with my wife recently in Yellowstone. And you know, you go off into bear country with your bear spray on your, on your hip, and people are coming back. You know, you're, you're heading out, people are coming back. And I was so intrigued by the conversations that would happen as you passed. You know, some people would stop and say, this actually happened. By the way, if you continue down this road about a quarter of a mile up, there's gonna be a grizzly bear. That is good nice. information for me to have. Yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I ready the bear spray, or they could say, you know what, there's a boulder in the road, or the, the trail is closed off, or whatever. Had I not had that conversation, God only knows what could have happened had my wife and I come upon a grizzly bear, right? HR professionals, you are saying, have the opportunity to learn from each other in similar ways. Yeah. Um, by collaborating global, globally, doing so intentionally, and getting beyond some of these um, challenges that people are saying that they face. Insufficient time. Leadership isn't being supportive. You know, uh, maybe other examples as well. I'd imagine it gets to a point where you have to look beyond your company leadership. You have to prioritize the time. Yeah. You have to make this intentionally um, collaborating globally and otherwise outside of your company, something that you see value in. Yeah. 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 You know, I, I want to say something about that. And I, I am running an event right now. It, it's ending tomorrow. It's called Hacking Culture. And one thing, it's, the, the past two big events that I've done are global peer-to-peer -peer learning experiences. That's how I like to call them because we, I'm not bringing any quote-unquote expert. I am putting people in groups to talk to each other. And one thing that I created was called the One Action Manifesto. And this is why I told them, I don't want you guys to come here on Monday morning 
and finish on Wednesday morning being the same person that you were before you came here because then we didn't do anything. We just didn't, we just didn't advance anywhere. Now, this is what, what I want you to do because all of the complexity of the problems about culture that we're dealing with is, well, very complex. I want you to commit to one, just one thing, not two, not three, not one and a half, one thing. And you commit to making that one thing happen. It may take you half an hour out of your day. It may take you one hour, depending on what that thing looks like. So my message to the community here that is commenting on lack of, lack of time or lack of leadership support or other, um, um, other elements in there, my, my encouragement to you is just take maybe half an hour every day, 20 minutes every day. If you can do that, maybe one hour every other day, whatever you can actually do, but take one action to start learning from people that are a little bit further ahead than you. That could mean either reaching out to them because you read one of their posts and it was fascinating. It could be joining another of Eric's events or one of the events that I'm doing. Whatever it is, whatever makes sense for you, but commit to one action. Whether your company supports that or not, that doesn't really matter. It does not really matter because this is making you better. You become better, your company will become better because you are becoming better. But if you change jobs tomorrow, you're taking all that value and all those assets with you because you are the one who became better through this process of learning. So commit to one action that can expand your network, your learning opportunities, your connectivity with others, and of course, that can help you collaborate more. And one more thing, I know, I know we're, time, we're getting out of time. Sally said, you know, I'm just an emerging HR leader. I don't have a lot to contribute to. Go, still go and learn from what others have to say. You know, it's not just contributing, it's also learning from others. Anyway. Just let it there. Very well said. I was going to pull her comment in if you didn't. And I will say very openly, openly and honestly that I'm learning from you, that I'm taking so much of, of the inspiration that I get for HR Hot Seat and the community that I'm trying to build by watching what you are doing with Hacking HR. And I can't tell you how much I appreciate conversations like this, but I'll get you on the phone or I'll send you an email. We'll talk about what we're doing. And we always make sure that we're doing something a little different because we don't yeah. want to replicate each other's yeah. pursuits so that we can be collaborative and we can be um, link arms in what we're doing instead of saying, oh, you know, come to my thing, but don't go to Enrique's, you know, yeah. Th there's room for all of us. And, and yeah. learning from you is, is one of the, the leading reasons why I have gotten as far as I have with my community. So thank I thank you, you for that. Um, 30 minutes has already gone by. Enrique, <laughs> this, is, this is exactly the conversation that I was hoping for. You've inspired people, I'm sure, um, to go out to collaborate globally, at the very least outside of their own organization. Um, if people want to learn more about you, the Hacking HR community, stuff that you're up to um, with your, your, your new membership um, that you've put together, membership platform, where can they find you online? My, my just LinkedIn is my main means of communication. So they can just put in Rika Rubio in the search box or Hacking HR. I think there's only one Hacking HR. Thankfully, it's just one <laughs> Hacking HR. <laughs> uh, there's Hacking something else, but there's just one Hacking HR. So they, they, will, they will find us, they will find me. And via email, Enrique at HackingHR.io. I am always very, you know, happy to connect with anybody and, you know, have a conversation and, and, and add value to each other and learn from each other. Great. Enrique, the last thing I'm going to ask of you is that you follow up with me after this conversation with links to any resources you want me to share with today's attendees. And I will send a follow-up email this afternoon, maybe tomorrow at the latest if necessary, with uh, links to those resources for people who want to really become engaged in the way that they haven't been so far. If Absolutely. you've enjoyed this, um, this Harmony Insights lunch date, I hope you'll return to harmonyinsights.com slash lunch dates. We have a whole bunch coming up after a brief hiatus. August is filled and even into September. Um, tomorrow, I'm holding my first job search huddle. So anybody who is in uh -huh. or, or anticipating a job transition, we're going to share best practices and successes and challenges tomorrow at noon. Tuesday of next week, I'm going to speak with a friend of mine on why leadership training doesn't work, um, which would be an interesting conversation next Thursday with Julie Turney out of Barbados, what I'm learning in my year of yes. And this is an HR practitioner that if you don't know about, you need to know about because Julie's doing some fantastic things with podcasting and books and so much more. And then I just signed a couple of people, including on September 24th, 
Terry Bean. If you've never heard Terry Bean speak, it is, it is quite an experience. Uh, I just participated in the HR Unite conference that um, Tina Marie Woolfield held recently out of Michigan, and Terry Bean was her keynote speaker, and I, I had to get in touch with him right away, and he agreed to join me on September 24th. I think earlier I said I signed him. I didn't sign him. I just asked him. He agreed. To, <laughs> it's like I'm an agent or something all of a sudden. <laughs> um, that being said, that's all at harmonyinsights.com slash lunch dates. Um, I want to encourage you to go about your afternoon if you need, if you have other work to do. Um, if you want to stick around, Enrique, do you have a few extra minutes to answer some questions that people yeah. might have for you? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. If you want to stick around, you know, I'll encourage you to unmute yourself at this point and, and we'll talk a little bit more. If you need to go about your afternoon, I hope you will come back to harmonyinsights.com slash lunch dates. I hope you will share it on LinkedIn. Hashtag lunch date, put the link up, um, tell people what we do here because I think it's very special and uh, I know it's special and, and I appreciate <laughs> I appreciate those who have joined us. And, and most of all, Enrique, thanks to you for your time today and showing up and inspiring us, giving us some actionable takeaways. I really have appreciated this conversation. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm happy to be here and collaborating. And, and you know, the, uh, when, when we think with, a, with a, an abundance mindset, that's, that's the most beautiful thing, right? Because there's enough in the world to for everybody and enough to do, which is the other side of the equation. You know, we always think like, a, like, you know, there's enough to get from the world. Yeah, but there's enough to give to the world too. And, uh, you know, we, in the HR space, we just, need, we just have so much work to do. That's when people ask me like, hey, are you competing with Disrupt HR? Or are you competing with Sherman? No, I'm not competing with anybody. We, we, there are 12 million HR professionals in the world. When you look at all of the communities and all of the events and all of the people, there are not more than 500,000 people participating in all those things. So that means that the overwhelming majority of HR professionals are not participating in anything. So there's no competition. The competition should be for us to try to find ways to reach more and more people out of that uh, marketplace, if you will. So anyway, just wanted to add that to, to this idea of um, expanding the pie and collaborating and, and adding, adding up to each other and, and being better together.